Welcome to Imagine Document Solutions demonstration of the Digital Drawer Document Management System. Today we will discuss organizing and finding case files within Digital Drawer. At this point we have already logged into Digital Drawer and are viewing the case files library. On the left within the libraries tab you will see all the document libraries that this logged in user has been granted access to. To view the documents within any of the libraries just click the name of the library. Remember, a document library is simply a grouping of similar types of documents. For this demonstration, we have created three libraries, a case files library, a customer contracts library, and a financials library. There is no limit to the amount of document libraries that you can have, and you can name the libraries anything you want. This allows you to customize the organization of your files in order to fit your specific situation. For this demonstration, we will look at the case files library. In the document grid on the right, each row represents a document. We are currently viewing all the documents within the case files library. To view a document, simply double click on the corresponding row within the document grid. The selected document is opened within the digital drawer document viewer. We will discuss what a user can do with a document in a moment, but first I will explain the main screen in a little more detail. For each library, you can have up to 25 index fields, and you can name these index fields according to your specific situation. These are the column titles that you see at the top of the document grid. The index fields will allow you to easily organize, sort, and locate the documents within a library. Since this library was created to store case files, we have created five index fields. The first field displays the case name. The second field displays a document description allowing you to know what type of document is contained, such as an affidavit or a deposition. We are also displaying the case number, the attorney assigned to the case, and the party being represented, allowing you to locate documents based on that information as well. To find the document that you are looking for, you can do several things. You can sort on any of the columns in the document grid, as well as manually scroll through the list. You can also click on the plus sign next to the library name that you are working with to see the individual folders. For the case files library, we see a list of all cases in our system. You can then click on a case name to see all documents associated with that case. You can continue to navigate through the folders until you find the documents that you are looking for. The document grid is now displaying an affidavit associated with the Brown v. Denson case. Keep in mind, all of the folders and index fields can be easily customized to fit your specific situation. You can also do a search for documents to allow you even more flexibility in finding the file that you need. By clicking on the search button, the search dialog box will appear. We will be searching the entire case files library. To find a document by a specific index field, you can either type the document's information in the appropriate field, or just select the information from the drop-down list. For example, let's find all of the depositions done by Attorney Chapman. As you can see, we've quickly found the two depositions associated with Attorney Chapman. There is another very handy way of finding documents. At the bottom of the search screen, there is a field titled Document Text. This field will allow you to locate every document in the system that contains a particular word or phrase. This is great for doing research that you otherwise would not be able to do. This will also prevent you from ever losing a document, since you can always locate the document based on the information contained within it. The days of misfiling and losing documents will be over. Once you have found the document that you are looking for, you can simply double click the document in the grid to open it. If you want to see the document more clearly, you can click the Maximize button at the top right of the viewer and the document will expand to cover the full size of your monitor. You can also zoom in on the document, rotate it, or move through the pages of the document. You can also add annotations or markups to a document. If you want to highlight an area, click the Highlight button, and select the area of the document that you want to highlight. To add a stamp, click the Stamp button to select the stamp that you want to add. For this demonstration, we have created a stamp that says confidential. To add a note to the document, click the note button, select the area of the document that you want the note to be placed, and type the text of the note.
You can resize and move the note to any place on the document. You can also draw marks on the document by using the marker tool. If there is sensitive information on this document that you do not want certain individuals to see, such as a client's social security number or sensitive financial information, you can black out the information on the document. To do this, click the Redact button on the toolbar and select the location of the document that you want to black out. Under the File menu, you have the options to print, email, or export this document. With each option, you have the ability to choose whether or not you want to include the annotations on the document. You have the option to include no annotations or redactions, which will give you the original document with no markups, with annotations and redactions, with annotations only, or with redactions only. If you choose with redactions only, the printed or emailed document will not contain any of the highlights, notes, or stamps, but any blacked out areas will be blacked out in the document. You can also insert, remove, or move pages around within a document by clicking on the Document menu. Now that we have seen what you are able to do with the documents in the system, we'll close the document and go back to the main screen within Digital Door. There are many more features within Digital Door that we will not touch on in this demonstration. However, I want to mention just a few. To modify the index data for a library, just click Tools Toggle Edit Mode to turn on Edit Mode. Simply change the data that needs to be changed and click Apply Changes. You can then turn off Edit Mode. In the event that you wish to print or email multiple documents at once, you can do so within the system without having to open up each document one at a time. Instead, you can simply select all of the documents that you wish to print or email and right click to bring up a menu. From this menu, you have the option to print or email all of these files at once. Within the same menu, you also have other options, such as copying and moving files from one library to another. As you can see, Digital Drawer was designed to be very easy to use, but if you need help determining how to do something within Digital Drawer, there is a complete help manual which explains exactly how to work with Digital Drawer, complete with step-by-step -step instructions. This concludes our demonstration on how to organize and find case files within Digital Drawer. If you have any questions or are interested in receiving more information about Digital Drawer, please give us a call at 877-870-9514 or send us an email at info at imaginedocs.com.